So just explaining what I just said, how it goes. Take some XML, turn it into a widget with some uh, services in the web that it can use and then uh, cross compile to different applications on different platforms. But is that now, uh, or if someone wants to pick it up again, it's there, it's open source, mm -hmm. right? you can do something with it. By the way, it's, it, it isn't that, I said it's that, but we actually sold this platform in South Africa, and there people are maybe, maybe have less iPhones than here, and uh, they're using it there to develop Java widgets and Java applications for uh, local touristic and government use. So it's still alive somewhere. So this was about how you choose your technology, but when you choose your technology and you're working with, with a company and a large team, you're often faced with how are we going to start? Are we going to start the classical way by okay, we have to design something, make some code, compile it, test it, and give it to users? Well, I say this approach is wrong. The approach works in the classical world, where we more or less know how to build an app, where we more or less know how to build a website. But it doesn't work in mobile applications because none of us know how to make this mobile application. Because if it's been made before, you're just making the copy, and we agree you wouldn't do that. And if it hasn't been made before, you're making something that users haven't seen before. So you have to confront users with what you want to make. And the best way to do that, in my opinion, is you just take a piece of paper, you print out an image of the mobile phone, and you draw what you want to, draw, what you want to make on that image. And you show that image to people. And we have done sessions uh, in, in a way that we have a stack of images there and people just need to sit there and, and narratively tell what they see and then push with it. It's very torky. Push with their finger on the paper and you switch to the next paper, etc. But it really helps you in understanding what they think when they see those images. And it's often very much different from what you had thought. So this, this already learns you basic things like, does this user know what this application is about? Because oftentimes he thinks, where is the order button? And you say, no, no, but this is not about ordering stuff, this is about something else. Ah, I didn't make that clear. So this is very important that you start with it because users are not familiar with mobile applications and you are not familiar with what you're going to make for them. Very important to do also this uh, prototyping on paper first. And then, of course, you can create the mock up, and the nice thing about the mock up is once you've made it in, in uh, in Photoshop, you can show it on a mobile screen, show it on a real physical device, and you can give it to users. And they can keep it in their hands and have a physical touch with it, physical feel, and that also helps you in understanding it. And even in basic things, but if you give it to people in, in, the, in daylight and they have to squint and they have to turn around because they can't read this, this nice contrast color scheme you made or, or contrast color scheme you made, so you already know these kind of things. So that's why you need to make a mock up, and then, of course, with the early prototype, go to the user, you give to them, and incorporate their feedback with them. So what I'm trying to say is when you develop a mobile application, make it might make the iteration cycles much shorter, much more briefer, because otherwise you will dive deeper and deeper and deeper, and users will not understand your final product. This is very dangerous. So this was just a, a flash. Um, if you want to read up about how this happens in real life, um, there's a very good example of the transistor application by Thomas who uh, really under under underwent different design iterations, and he started with a really cool, fancy ID. And in the end, well, I'll not explain the story because otherwise, it's important. But if you have to read it, then you will see uh, how you, I think the URL is here on the slide. Um, yeah, I'll just write down his name if you, you want to look it up. <laughs> yeah, I did it. I did it fast. Um, no, but he has a good example on how this goes. And this will also learn you again. Maybe this is better to the, the design paper. Okay. Okay, so uh, we know how to interact with the user. We have chosen our application. We even chose a technology platform. And we now want to, 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 to shape our development process. That's good. That's good. Now let's go look for some content. And most companies think, okay, let's do some viral video. We're going to create a viral video. Or maybe we can take what we have. We have a cool sound or we have a cool ring or our logo is so oh, that's fantastic. We'll give it out to the user. That's what they want. Some even think about, hey, on our website, we have the whole history of the company. That's nice. How they used to use the carriers and the horses to carry the products from the factory to, to the use. That's good. We'll put that up. But the content is important, but not that kind of content. The only content that matters is user generated content. When you're on a mobile, there are only two things that, that are important and that allow users to, to interact with your application. That's share and create. When you allow them to share stuff and to create stuff, your application will distribute itself. 
if you only push the content out, it's much harder to have your application widely distributed. So try to focus on sharing and creating options for your users, and you will have no problems in the content department. I'm really being it's also black and white color schema, so this is a black and white presentation to wake up some people in companies who are usually not uh, thinking about you. And the last aspect I want to talk about is money, because money is also an important thing in mobile. And the reason I think there's so much enthusiasm about mobile applications is that people are paying this uh, $3 fee to get this application out of the store. That's wonderful. Everyone is so happy now because they think, well, this is a model, that's a model that will last forever. We had the internet model, people didn't pay for content. Now we have the app model, people pay for apps. That's great. But in my opinion, it will not last. At a certain moment, of course, you come to the separation point. After 50 applications on my phone, I spent $150. I'm starting to think, okay, let's wait before installing yet another one. So the model doesn't scale, or the model scales, but up to the point of separation, of course. And at that moment in time, you need to think, okay, how am I going to extract money from this user? How am I going to, what is the marketing terminology, the lifetime value of that user? How can I do that? Well, for me, it's pretty simple. The future of applications is in the in-app payments. Today, we already see this. Uh, we already saw the developer this morning and said, the way I do it, I make a basic app for free, and when I want to play the additional levels, I sell it for three euro. That's genius. That's only the start of genius. When you want to be really genius, you sell the first level for zero, the second level for zero dot ten, the third level for zero dot two, and you start with your stuff from the start. And the customer will not care about these few cents, but over his lifetime, he will have spent much more than the two euros or the three euros you are about. And that's only possible because today a very, very good technology has emerged. And that's the technology of in-app payments. Today you can with a single click ask money for it from the user. The user doesn't need to type in the password all the time, he doesn't need to go to a website, he doesn't need to go uh, outside of your application. You can just play the click and continue using your application. And that's very revolutionary. We didn't have this. The reason Shadow didn't work is because, yeah, are you keeping keeping and paying those three euros? That's the same model that you have today in the App Store. Mm -hmm. With the, with the in-app payments, you don't have this, and I think that it allows for continuous upselling towards the users, and I think you should endorse the in-app payment technology is really um, I'm not going into virtual currency, that will be another power so but it's also very interesting. When you look at in-app payments, uh, you have to look at PayPal, of course, they need to wait here, um, besides the whole virtual currency thing. Um, PayPal is today also available in Belgium, uh, only on the iPhone, they have yet to release their in-app payments for the Android platform, but it will also be only a few weeks. Um, last week they announced that they uh, made Belgium available, if you download the latest PayPal in-app payment SDK, uh, Belgium is also in the list now. What does this mean? After one time logging into the PayPal uh, application, uh, from that moment on, from within your app, not PayPal's app, so Suppose you sell pizzas, you can show him, okay, after this pizza, you can show him this screen, and he just needs to press the pay button, you see the overview when he's done with it. That's it, the money is on your account. This is really revolutionary, so you can really do the transactions very easily, and you don't have to have a transaction worth of 20, 30, 50 dollars to make it worthwhile for the user to do all of that on his mobile phone. You can even do it for transactions of 20, uh, 20 cents or something. So that's very good. So this is what I really wanted to talk about. I talked about the different steps you need to take and how you can earn money with it. Uh, presentation very much aimed at, uh, let's say, um, companies that are now prepared to spend money on mobile applications. But I also want to give an overview or an insight how you can go beyond that. Because by the model there is the start, and we can't all make our own Foursquare application or we can't all make our own global application. Those exist already. So we have to think about what models can be used that are interesting to users and that don't duplicate the functionality they already have. And I found some good examples of that. So I don't want to be like a monorail because I can't. I'm not handsome enough. I don't have those. Okay. <laughs> uh, so I, I, I don't want to end up like this person here because that's also not looking so good. What I will try to do is I will try to be the necklace on the star. Marilyn will shine, and I will shine with her. So if I can just be the necklace on the star, I can get all the attention I want. So how can 